thank you so much for joining us here on the Construction Pals podcast, the show all about everyone's favorite topic, which is, of course, construction, obviously. Uh, I am your host, Jackhammer Jerry, and I'm here with a very special guest, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Who are you? Jay Cimente. Jay Cimente, with, which rhymes with Cimente. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's appropriate for this show. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're going to talk construction, guys. A lot of people are, uh, are interested in, in all the new trends in construction. So, so Jay, let me ask you this. What do you think is going to be the, uh, the biggest new construction project this year? Well, the, the new one is uh, One Young, and it's uh, going to 106 stories. And uh, they're putting a school in it, which is interesting. Yeah, that is yeah. that is very interesting, yeah. but not as interesting as the real topic of today's show, because this is not the Construction Pals podcast. This is, in fact, the Photography Friends podcast. And uh, your name is actually Jay, and people should probably know that because you've been on the show before. Yes, I'm <laughs> happy to be back. Thanks so much for the invite. And you are, and you are a man, and you are a myth, and you are a legend. <laughs> that, those parts are are all true. Oh, and uh, yeah, we got all our cameras here. We're here in the studio doing like a real, uh, real live in person episode, which is which is nice, which is a nice vibe. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna talk about uh, photography, obviously. Specifically, though, what are we talking about? It was uh, Jay's topic idea today, so we're going to need to hear it from the man himself. So today we're talking about um, beginner cameras um, and how we started. Um, I see yours, Jerry. <laughs> there it is. Here. What yeah, is this here? We've got a Canon uh, point and shoot. I can't probably tell you which uh, exact model number. It seems to be kind of worn off. It's an off. elf, right? It's, it's an elf, elf maybe. Okay, I don't know. Elf. Anyway, maybe. But these are pretty cool now. Like, yeah, these are pretty cool I'm now. looking at these, actually, <laughs> for, for now. But yeah, I, I also uh, started with Canon as well. My Canon, my first, car, uh, my first uh, camera was an M10, Canon M10. Yep. Uh, I only started, what, maybe four into my fifth year, probably now. And then from there, I went to the M6 because, uh, well, first of all, I think um, you got to start being good with your with with your phone. Yeah. And then from there, you try to upgrade. I I was really really uh, slow with the upgrade because I knew I was gonna be obsessed. Yeah. And as you can see, these are mine, <laughs> and there's so many in between. Um, uh, quite a quite a quite a selection here, but uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get into all of those details. We'll talk about you know the the whole exciting history of the uh, different cameras that we've owned, and also give you guys some tips. You know, if you're just starting out in photography and you want to uh, you want to start getting a little bit more serious by that first real camera, we're going to uh, tell you guys how to do that in the right way. But before we can do any of that, Jay, before we can get into uh, into those thrilling details, I got to tell you. A little bit of something about our sponsor, which is CloudSpot. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the the easiest way for photographers to deliver and sell their photos online. I don't even need the script. I've done it. I'm a I'm a pro. I'm a pro <laughs> Perfect. podcaster, man. You know what? And you can experience beautiful galleries and uh, and grandma proof image downloads. They call it grandma proof because it's that easy that anyone <laughs> anyone's grandma could do it. Grandpas even, even grandpas <laughs> that watch hockey all day could yeah. probably figure out how to download a photo off of CloudSpot. And if you or your grandpa want to download a photo off of CloudSpot, they, can, uh, they don't even have to use a promo code. It's not even that complicated. You just click on the link down in the description and you can get 50% off. And uh, in this economy, <laughs> that's, that's huge. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's out of the way. We can uh, we can talk about the the first cameras that we ever owned. And uh, as you said, yeah, I've got uh, I've got one of them right here. My uh, my little Canon point and shoot. I wouldn't even say that this was my first real camera, though. I'd say my first quote unquote real camera was the um, T5i, the Canon T5i that I actually bought off of uh, Kijiji, which I wouldn't recommend doing. I don't, that's, that'll really, probably be, eh? that'll really? probably be the first point. Um, yeah. Buying, when you buy your first camera, like, would you recommend buying it, it used or new? Let's just get, let's start with that. Depends on the budget and what yeah. you want to do. It's hard to figure out what you want to do. Um, for me, uh, I, I found mine at Shoppers Drug Mart. And it was 
cheap enough for me to buy. So yeah. I, I ended up buying from, from there. But I, I, Kijiji, I have been burned before. Um, recently, actually mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. I got burned on a 28 to 70 Canon. Mm. But besides that, it's been a pretty good experience. Yeah, it's been a pretty yeah. good experience. Yeah, for me, like just because I didn't know anything about cameras, uh, I don't think it was a good idea for me to buy. Like used is okay, but like through Kijiji, just like buying it off a person, um, I actually ended up with a bit of a problem because the camera that I bought had a dead pixel like oh, right cool. away. Yeah, so, yeah. which uh, I didn't really know enough to look to, for to at it, the yeah. time. And yeah. I did. I am gonna give my friend Pavel some shit here. <laughs> he was the the more experienced <laughs> photographer at the time. I did make a point of making sure that when I bought that camera He's with you. that he was oh, with no. me and he looked at it so you guys need someone to blame <laughs> yeah for me it was fu- a fungus oh it was actually fungus in the buddy. middle of the uh, middle wow. of the thing and uh, on I a had lens it cleaned on a lens whatever. yeah yeah that you were able to get cleaned off it was expensive yeah but it was cleaned and mm. it's perfect mm-hmm. but it definitely was uh, I had no idea and it was scary yeah and it was a, quite the sure. process I think it took three weeks local a local guy in Scarborough yeah did a great job. I just shot with it with a dead scary. pixel forever. So my yeah. first like whatever amount of videos, hundred videos are all dead pixel. Oh videos. no! <laughs> a lot of time people can't even tell that type of stuff. I never like, had a DSLR. Yeah. I came in fairly not too long ago, and I went mirrorless right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And I found that the Canon M line, which is dead now, was actually pretty affordable. And I don't mind adapting. I don't mind putting adapter on. I don't. And, and with Canon. So far, so good that everything's worked on the M line and then the RF line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how do you sure. feel about that? Uh, yeah, like I've used some. I've used the uh, M50 mm-hmm. uh, Mark II. Would you recommend that as a beginner camera? Because I think I would. Yeah. Yeah, the M50 Mark One or Mark II adapted to with an EF I, to I, EFM. I think that's a decent camera. If yeah, if you're man. not ta- if you don't know if you don't know yeah. what you're actually doing and how. How far you want to go for the thousand bucks that it costs? For a thousand bucks, yeah, and you're getting a lens, right? You have to consider yeah. you're getting the kit lens yeah. and the camera. Uh, one big problem with uh, the M50 Mark II that I will point out uh, is the autofocus. Really? So, yeah. Wow, I didn't expect that. Detail, detailed answer. Mm-hmm. This because I've really used these cameras. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the autofocus is actually fine, like the face tracker autofocus, if you're shooting in 1080. But the minute you go to 4K, because oh, you lose it. it. The same as the RP switches from uh, like phase detection, which to is contract. better to the contrast, contrast, yes, which yes. is bad, terrible. Yeah, the RP so, does the same thing. Yeah, and I actually had to like get something. Uh, it was like th- a remote shoot that someone else was doing, and I was like guiding it, guiding mm-hmm. them through that through Zoom. Yeah. and we ended up having to reshoot that segment, and I had to like pay them again because of that. So that was had, that was yeah, pretty frustrating. That's pretty crazy. Pretty frustrating. I haven't. Yeah. I've never shot 4K with the M6. Mm-hmm. Would be similar yeah. to the M50. Mm-hmm. But I find they can get this M6 pretty cheap. Yeah. And it does a lot for the bang for your buck. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, for about the same price, though, I mean, as a, as a, so I was about to pick up my camera. It's yeah. over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, my camera's a little bit busy right now. Yeah. So we'll yes. have to excuse it. I just realized I'm shooting this video in 4K too, which is not necessary. Oh, no. At, at no. <laughs> but, uh, but it's too late. But, uh, you know, there's the, for around $1,000, you can get into like the uh, A6, thousand series of uh, of sony cameras Do you have experience on that that would be equivalent yeah. to the m6 yeah they're like and the crop, m5 like a crop APS-C, sensor rangefinder style yeah uh i would say that they're a little bit better than the canon just because well there's a few reasons but the fact that you the mounts man honestly like that's the, the that's the yeah. biggest thing right now um, that's like separating sony from a lot of the competitors is that e-mount dude and like i went to um I went to this uh, event, uh, not not sponsored. Just bring up your event, VizTech, <laughs> <laughs> the VizTech uh, Pro Expo. You ever checked that out? Yes, I have. Yes, you checked. Did you go last there? year? No, th- this last year I did not go. go. No, yeah, because I would have seen, last year I yeah, seen exactly. you there. Exactly. Yeah. You were there, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool, and like the fact that I could just they had all the different. Um, lens guys there you know the yep. sigma and mm-hmm. uh tamron, tamron and yeah. they even had the uh the sony guys there who are, who are very cocky you know they're very cocky <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah like the fact that i could just go around and just boom without boom. any adapters i'm just trying all these lenses even exactly i took like a 300 millimeter and just 
clipped right it on, on there, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's pretty pretty freaking amazing that that you can do that where, you know, I think like Canon and some other companies have kind of backed themselves in a bit of a corner with yeah, that but, stuff. Uh, with yeah. Canon, the EF line goes back to 87, I want to say. I'm not quite sure. But, yeah. And they all pretty much work. They do work, yeah. And adapted, they look they work great, yeah. but and then the RF line is just budding out, budding, starting to starting to grow now. Yeah, true. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you can you can get the adapter thing and like it's not gonna ruin your life. But just for the simplicity, like I do love the the E mount thing. It's one of the distinguishing things, you know. And it's not as fast. Adapting a lens is definitely not as fast as a native yeah. Native lenses, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 But uh yeah, before we spend the whole time talking about specific cameras though, I do wanna at least for for the listeners out there, especially people who are like brand new, you know, give them some more tips, just general tips in terms of like buying your first uh, new camera. I think like getting your hands on, you know, you can do your research, right? Like mm-hmm. you can you can watch YouTube videos. Yeah, you yeah. can do, uh, you know, you can call up photography uh, friends of yours. Yeah, or you can even go to the store and handle them. You can go to the store and handle yeah. them and stuff like that. Yeah, that's where I'm really getting though. Like, there's only so much that you can mm-hmm. kind of hypothetically learn, right? Like, exactly. in terms of like, oh, theoretically, yeah. And you can read the spec sheets and stuff, but like, you and I know that cameras, camera companies, come up with like creative ways of lying to you. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, and also it's different feels. Yeah. They all have a different feel. You yeah. don't really know in the beginning. Totally, man. So totally. yeah, yeah. So getting your hands on like number one, yeah, you can go to the camera store. That's again, that's only going to show you so much because you're not really that's not really the conditions that you're probably going to be shooting exactly. in unless you work for camera stores yeah and, and you're not I really mean, there yeah. for very long you don't really have that much time right yeah so yeah. i would say like if you can like borrow a camera off a really nice friend of yours who, yes. tr- who trusts you which they shouldn't if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> exactly so they shouldn't they, they shouldn't. definitely shouldn't they definitely, yeah. definitely shouldn't tr- i trust jay with my yeah. camera, <laughs> and he would trust me Look, he's trusting me right now with this camera yeah right exactly here. you see he looks he got a little bit scared no no not at all <laughs> <laughs> but That's... uh yeah like the um yeah being able to rent you can go and rent cameras that's yeah, probably yeah. this tech the, does that as well yeah. Yeah. I've done it before from Viztech. Yeah, Viztech. There's uh, another local spot, uh, B Camera here in okay. town that I've used before. They're pretty good in uh, Liberty Village. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another option for you. Yeah, Viztech is obviously the the big option. But you know, you're gonna spend what a hundred bucks, maybe something like that, right? Hundred and fifty yeah, tops for a weekend. And that's going to give you a chance to really try it out and mm-hmm. shoot in the conditions that you actually shoot, right? Yeah. Like you can go to your house, you can go to your studio, you can get your, well, you probably don't have a studio if you're just starting out. You can rent a studio. You if you 100%, want to. yeah, you can. Yeah, you know, uh, you can go in your own backyard and, yeah. and shoot back there, shoot photos of your dog or whatever. Really get a sense for how you like the camera. Things you should look for, obviously. Um, yeah, just how it feels in your hand. How hand the... for sure. That's most one of the most important. Yeah. As well as like if you're using, if you uh, plan to work in low light. Yep. You should really test that. Cause True. Because they're yes. all very yeah. different. Yep. Both cropped and uh, full frame. Mm-hmm. Like they're both very different. So definitely autofocus yes. uh, that we talked about is a uh, is a huge one. Mm-hmm. The just like the menus and stuff, like how it functions, right? Like that was a big learning curve for me. Is that like a big thing for you, like learning a new I menu never, system? I never experienced the Sony. People yeah. complain. I'm, I'm like, I couldn't tell you yeah. if it was true or not. But I have no problems. I use. Uh, I'm, con- I'm constantly going through three different systems. Mm-hmm. Like all the time, so I have no problem with yeah. that. I just never tried Sony. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I would say that you know, having used uh, Canon and Sony, like mm-hmm. I would say that in some ways, Canon is a little bit easier. Especially, I feel like yeah, beginners. Canon is probably yeah. the easiest for beginners, yeah. in my opinion. I've really, I've played around with a couple Sonys. Mm-hmm. Never actually really had one for a weekend or not or so, but um, but I find yeah, it's like the Apple of um, of photography is canon yeah true. very very simple to use yeah it is simple to to pick up and use so mm-hmm. you know that's something to consider if it is the first camera that uh that you've ever used in your entire life right that because uh, it can turn you off yeah it can really turn somebody off yeah and, and put it down and there goes it's dusty it's yeah like, it's, it's and dusty. to be honest it did take me uh, a little bit of time just to get used to like the sony menus especially when i switched over doesn't right? have so. the new one though it doesn't have the new menus on the a7 IV. the i guess i don't know oh, <laughs> i heard the new one was uh i haven't used uh, anything newer than this one so okay I can't, can't really tell you but i can tell you that's it's kind of a weird um like 
compromise that Sony has made. They've got, they want to do kind of like the tactical photography thing, like your uh, shutter speed and um, your aperture you can do with like a dial and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I do like that's I what do I have like with, the, with yeah. the with the Canon with, with the RP. Yeah. I've got them yeah. both set like that way as well. Yeah, but yeah. it was a little bit of a learning curve because I was just so used to like on on my uh, old 6D Mark II, I would like click on like the little uh, stuff on the touch screen and just do it all back there. And you can still kind of do that on Sony, but they don't, it's more designed towards like the, the tactical thing. It just, it all takes getting used to. And yeah, it's really important. Memory. It's just a matter of personal taste at the end of the day. Right. But mm -hmm. if you, like I said, it's going to cost you how much to rent, like a hundred and whatever bucks for something that you're going to go out then and then spend, you know, three grand on a body potentially or yep. two or Four, five. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that for your first camera. No, you're probably spending, <laughs> you know, a grand or a grand or two, right? And you want to, you want to be able to like, you want to like your camera if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna use it for that long. If you want to be able to have a good grip on it, you're happy with your grip. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, getting getting hands on is uh, is a huge one for sure. Um, yeah. In terms of just like doing your research, though, uh, is there like a particular kind of source that you actually trust like a podcast or a youtube video youtube channel or anything like that that you personally uh, just just youtube most views the most um, interactions i yeah. go with first and then after that you go a little bit further a little deeper pricing locally mm -hmm. what it costs obviously peter mckinnon is uh you know a man that gets shouted out quite a bit oh for sure uh the picture of this photography podcast i like those guys a lot yep. too as you're saying not as not as uh I don't know, packed with personality. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely yeah. not. They're a little drier for yeah, sure. For sure. Good information though. And yeah, like finding people that you can actually trust. Um, you know, there there is such a thing as people who are fanboys for a particular brand or, or whatever. Yeah. 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 And they yeah, they can't really rely upon yeah. what they're saying if someone uh is trying out like a lot of different cameras and things like that and they're actually being honest i think you gotta look out for that yeah i have thing. i have no loyalties yeah. i use three different systems no loyalties like it whatever it's what i what i feel like shooting the look i want i'll use it totally yeah, yeah. i'm not a canon person or, a, or you know fuji or anything but specific so, yeah 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 they're all they're all good for different things thing. yeah they have their own yeah. thing so yeah definitely yes yeah. you're, you're really cutting yourself off from the world if you are a hater and you yeah 100 percent. one brand mm -hmm. and you know all, they all kind of have something to offer too how do you yeah. feel about uh beginners going to film film photography wow yeah, that's, that's a good idea question Bad mm. idea for me. I, I it was hard to go from digital to film. I had to I had to try because I you know yeah. as soon as I, as soon as somebody as soon as like my family and their friends found out that I was, I was a photographer in their it, you know out of the out of the woodwork all their film cameras came to me. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like you know what I didn't pay for anything. Try it out, and it's it's difficult. Yeah. It's much especially as a beginner. Well, I would to, say to, that to switch your mind that way. For and sure. film is so expensive now. Yeah, I would say that technically speaking probably like the right way to do it is to learn film first really like I, I think so right because you're actually learning the stuff for me i feel like <laughs> these new mirrorless cameras you can ha it shows your your, your exposure yeah for it's sure exposure simulation so when you set something it changes yeah. on the actual screen like your yeah. phone uh, so i find that for me that was a lot easier mm -hmm. i'm like okay if i turn shutter speed it gets darker or lighter and the yeah. same thing if i do that with my, yeah. with my aperture yeah. So I thought for me that was much easier that way yeah. because imagination. Oh, I didn't say anything a lot about of imagination. easier. I just said oh, okay. it's probably the right Better. way. Oh, okay, yeah. right way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, like I feel like because I learned digital first, I ended up learning like the technical side, right? Like mm -hmm. how do I change aperture? How do I change shutter speed? How do I do this? How do I handle ISO? Where, like, talking to some film photographers, and I've like been interviewing some and had a yes. had a couple uh, on the podcast, right? Like if you, I feel like if you, I'm starting to get the sense that if you actually start on film, then what you're really going to learn is like the principles of light and like how to manage light. 
Yes. Where, yeah, if you start on digital, you kind of learn like the tech side first. And I almost like I don't regret that I started with digital because like that's how you make money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is an important part of it. But I do think that I kind of missed out on some stuff. It like to relate it to music, right? It's almost like they say you should probably learn on like an acoustic guitar first yeah. and even like a really shitty acoustic guitar so that like you build up that strength in your hands. And then um, when you switch over to an electric, all of a sudden it's like a lot easier for you and things like that. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like the film photography thing is has been something that's kind of alluded me thus far have you done a lot of it like you have one or two i have one here which was oh, a trap was, yeah which is what led me to leica oh which yeah is probably a trap here <laughs> but yeah but if you want to do that you go to leica you go yeah. to the m line and then you go backwards that way mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you have that you have you have that film feeling but still digital because you still yeah. have to imagine what you're seeing it's yeah. not there's nothing simulated in there right that's right, why right. it led me to there yeah cool it's just a trap massive right. trap <laughs> but uh but yeah that's what that's how i feel right. because the canons are great and the sony's are amazing yeah but sometimes i just want to slow everything down right so so with the leicas when you're changing the settings it, you don't actually you don't see you don't anything see until you shoot the photo until you shoot the photo and then you can view it and then you, you can, can view see it that. yeah yeah uh my leica doesn't even you can't even shoot live right. view yeah so it's completely analog feeling yeah yeah whereas if you film. do film you don't see it until you develop and some people you know people yeah. take notes as they take photos but at the same time who's really doing that all the time yeah it's pretty crazy man it's it's a crazy world it, it does interest me quite a bit and i also don't recommend the x100 series of fuji point and mm -hmm. shoots i don't recommend that as a beginner's yeah photographer uh, photo uh, yeah. camera as well I don't know why. It's just, it just I feel like it's you're too limited. Mm -hmm. I feel like I think you need something like the some the M6 where it's it's like a phone, higher quality phone. It doesn't have a viewfinder unless you want to use it. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier to transition into that from your phone to something small like the M6. Add a viewfinder if you find it you, you would need it. And then from there you you graduate. I find that's what my 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 way was. Yeah. And what what is your view on like using your phone for photography? Do you think that's legit? I think if you're good, you're good. It yeah. doesn't matter. You yeah. know, realistically, yeah. to a degree, if you're trying to uh, trying to um, portray portray something, yeah. then yeah, okay, you use this, this, the the tool for it. Yeah. But I, overall, I think if you're good. Yeah. It, it, there's two things. Like, okay. I find with the, you know, we were talking a little bit about like the misleading advertising thing like that. I mm -hmm. think that that is like pretty uh, like egregious within like cell phone advertising. Like to just oh, use, yes, to, yes. to use this as an example, right? It's, like it's this, not a is the, this is the Google Pixel 7, Great right? Great phone. Yes. It's pretty good. Um and like the the lens is pretty chunky. Mm -hmm. They have like a pretty chunky lens on here, which is important, right? But the way like I see the the YouTube ads, and they obviously worked because I bought this phone. <laughs> but um, yeah, like they say, oh, people always see my pictures on the seven, and uh, they are like, oh, did you take that with a real camera? Like that shit is just not true. Okay, okay. it's just not true. It's like well, they're well, not my, as good. My phone's supposed yeah. to shoot AK. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're on. they're fine, but I just feel like some honesty would be nice. Like, obviously, you're not gonna buy a phone for you to know, replace, say, Canon yeah, or Sony, seven hundred yeah. bucks, and expect that it's it's not gonna shoot photos the way that your your real like thing shoots. And then you know there is the thing of like there's only so many megapixels, and then sure that's fine. Like shoot on your shoot on your phone and put it on Instagram or whatever, but then what happens if later down, later on down the line you want to print those photos? Yeah, but at the same time, I don't right. think megapixels is everything. Yeah. Because yeah. this, is, this is my Leica, the one I shoot the most with is 10. Yeah, true. And they, they look, to my, my opinion, they look great. Yeah, they look great, but like to yeah. print them, right, print if them, you want to do Yeah, like they a... print pretty good in 8x12, I shoot them at. Yeah. Like that's because I printed at yeah, 8x12. Yeah, that's probably good. It's pretty good. It's decent. I yeah. feel like most beginners won't be shooting anything past, you know, I don't even think they'll be getting up to eight by eight by ten. To yeah, that's yeah. true. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever works for you, like honestly. But uh, yeah, just for me personally, it does kind of. I don't know. Maybe every like photographer who spent a lot of money on camera gear is going to get frustrated by that claim <laughs> that like, oh, it's you can just shoot it on your phone or whatever. Oh, no, definitely like, not. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But yeah, the the thing to remember too is that like it's not all about the fancy tech like 
and you know I drew this out earlier when we were talking about the difference between like film photography and uh and digital right it's all about managing that light at the end of the day yeah. like you can have the nicest camera in the world right you can have like uh Canon uh, R5 or whatever the hell. Yeah, whatever it is. R3, whatever yeah, it is. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. And those are like $8,000, right? Yeah. But like if you're shooting in a dark room or you have no idea like what to do with light or you don't own any lights, like that's mm-hmm. always the funny thing too. When, yeah, that's that's a good point that, uh, that we should definitely draw out here too that – you want to budget some money for, yeah, like you want to have that, you want to buy that body, mm-hmm. but then, you know, you do have to buy other stuff, right? A battery. You gotta, a second battery yeah, is always, second always battery. good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lenses. Yep. You know, I, I just have, I honestly just have the, the one lens right now and it's, uh, you know, the 24 to 70 to eight, uh, Sigma, probably the most like popular lens, lens in yeah. the world at Gray the, lens, at the yeah. moment. I see them everywhere. Our mm-hmm. buddy, uh, Mike Medeiros has the ex- yep. exact same lens. Yep. So he makes a, makes a great second shooter, uh, with that lens, but you know, you're going to have to buy a flash, right? Yeah. Probably a panel you're light, maybe stills. if you're doing yep. video. If you plan to do a little bit of video because yeah. the beginners are thinking about, you know, um, TikTok and yeah, for sure. And Instagram stories. So. Yeah. And there's all of that uh, hype around like camera bodies, right? Like, did you, when you were kind of getting into it, did you experience that? Like where all the hype was around the body and like, you didn't really know that yes, much. But about, I knew, yeah. I knew not to worry about the body. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like you see in Kijiji, when you start really researching for prices that those all drop. Yeah. But lenses always maintain like a good, Mm. a good value for for a while yeah. so i was like you know what the body whatever if i can get the look i want with a body like i want the canon look with the, for skin tones yeah i'll spend the money on on lenses yeah a lot of the uh yeah, it's just because you're a savvy guy man it's just because you're a smart guy i think it was so, fro that yeah. told me that fro knows yeah. photo yeah <laughs> was like glass 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 yeah. glass glass yeah you so. can have the fanciest freaking camera body in the world but yeah. if you're throwing like really shitty glass on it yeah that's like you know f7 or whatever yeah uh, your photos aren't gonna uh, maybe look as good as someone who has a little bit of a older uh generation of body but, but uh, nice glass yeah, two eights but, yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah. or even one eights yeah you know? it's going to make a, a huge difference for you. So yeah, just when you're kind of budgeting out, like let's, you know, let's say your budget is like a thousand dollars. Well, if you spend all of that on a camera body, you don't have a lens, you don't exactly. have a flash, you don't have uh, anything. Right? Well, let's say a, a grip, tripod. Ba- yeah, yeah. Or a grip or yeah. anything like that. Would for you sure. recommend primes or zooms for beginners off the bat? And would you recommend a kit lens? Because I'd say hmm. no to the kit lens. Okay, well, let's I would hear, say let's hear your not... spiel on the kit lens. I'd love to hear that. There's, yeah. There are some that are really nice, yeah. like the, the Fuji one. I heard yeah. those really good. But overall, I think you should get a nicer lens mm-hmm. off the bat. Yeah. Because you get that kit lens and you go home and you look at them. Because I had the kit lens for the M6. Yeah. And I'm like, my phone's better. Yeah. You yeah, know? So yeah. I was like, maybe not get a kit lens off the bat a zoom lens i think yeah. over versus a, a prime for most beginners yeah but uh definitely better than a kit lens yeah there's kind of like two ways that you can look at a kit lens either they're like camera manufacturers are trying to like help new photographers because mm. they don't know what to buy in terms it's, of yeah, a it's lens. a general range right? and it's just like here's something you can go and start shooting photo photos or you could say that they're sort of preying on new photographers in a sense because like you said those lenses are usually not good and like by no. the time that i actually like knew what i was doing even when i bought my 6d mark ii and i mm-hmm. definitely didn't know what i was doing back yeah. then but i knew enough to not get that kit lens yes, right yes, like yes. and a lot of the time with the um with the kit lens right it's like that variable aperture thing yeah so let's say that you buy a kit lens and it's like uh i don't know 20 24 to 105 sure a lot yeah. of them are like that right yeah, which frame, like yeah. there's no way it's going to be good right no. if, already <laughs> yeah right but then it's got the um yeah like when you're you, you're looking at that uh that aperture right and it's like oh it says it's f whatever it's f3 5 mm-hmm. right oh oh wow right at the beginning only right yeah. when you're at yeah sure when you're at like the widest the widest 
Uh, but then as soon as you start zooming in a little bit, oh, now it's F7, now it's F10 or whatever. Yeah. And that's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. Especially when like that used to be a huge frustration for me when I was doing like videos and then I'd want to do like an actual um, like a, a kind of zoom in, zoom out, but like physically do it with the camera lens. Mm -hmm. And then your whole scene is like Changing. getting dark as you're yeah. zooming. And it's like, man, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, uh, it is... It is sad to say, like, you do have to do even more research. You have to research because then you're researching a camera and then you have to research a lens, a lens. before you can even buy or Which brand, what, we, what you can yeah. afford as well. Yep, totally. Yeah. So it it is, a, it is a pain in the ass. But also remember that if you if you guys buy something that you don't like, you can just bring it back yeah, to the camera. Sure. Like, and that's why I really, that's why I really recommend, like, um, either buying, like, you if you are going to buy used, and you don't really know what you're doing, um, like go to uh, go to like Downtown Camera, yeah, something like that. Three of right? these on the table yeah, here from, from Downtown from Camera. Downtown, Their stickers are yeah. still on yeah. them from them. Yeah. From who's the guy that run? Al or Stan? Stan. Stan. Oh, yeah. Stan's Stan okay. the man. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's Nigel. Nigel? Yeah. yeah. No, Stan's the guy that like owns it or whatever. Oh, okay. But Nigel's, Nigel's the guy who does. He's the guy who hooks up the deals. Yeah. Yeah. He's the guy <laughs> Whenever who, Stan's uh, not looking. He's my drug peddler. Yeah. He's my drug dealer. <laughs> he's your drug dealer. <laughs> yeah. You come in and he's like, Yeah. Up his what hands. can I get you like, today? All right, we're going to get this guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like if you buy it from a, a reputable spot, you get a warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that's how camera gives yeah. warranties, same as yeah. Henry's as well yeah. Yeah. especially if you buy it brand new and you're gonna have that like 30 days or whatever it is usually that you can bring that thing back like you can try it out and if you don't like it like there's no reason why you need yeah. to keep that you can just is keep keep the box yeah when you buy it i always keep the box for the first couple of weeks that oh I'm i like i like keeping the box. i'm yeah. one of those guys that likes keeping them keep all the boxes, all boxes. forever yeah oh, forever man. lenses your too your girlfriend is not no she's like guys, what is this do you guys live together <laughs> yes we do in a man, tiny little place yeah that's only gonna <laughs> last so long let me tell yeah. you as a married man yeah okay <laughs> Okay. Oh man. Those boxes are only going to be around for so long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, but yeah. buying used also they they also give warranties. I've had war I've yeah, had totally. warranties on all the, all these cameras from Datsun Camera. Totally. Yeah, I'm yeah. Com I'm co more comparing it to like a Kijiji or something. Oh, like Kijiji, yeah. yeah. It's a where, risk risk and a half. Yeah. Where you're definitely risking it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, like if you if you're not quite sure, like if you're able to, yeah, buy something like at a, an actual camera store, I think that would be the the good way to you to do it yeah and don't don't be tempted by that kit lens like because yeah. you also can't really sell one of those that's the thing no one really wants no, to buy no definitely lens, so. not unless it's an f4 yeah. which yeah. you might want to keep anyway yeah also there's I, I found um when i started out a lot of gatekeeping true especially in camera stores there is yeah like um random ones smaller ones always i've never really felt like a lot of stores I won't go to now because of how they treat, treated me in the beginning. Yeah, you don't feel comfortable. That's why I just basically go to Henry's yeah. and Downtown Camera. Yeah. It is nice now, though, when you know all the stuff and you can go in there. Yes. And you're like, all right. But still, like, but still, you know, it, yeah. you know, it was, it was difficult. I didn't understand what was going on. I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? I was like, well, don't you want to take my money? I guess, I guess not. So I just kind of left. It is incredibly intimidating. Like, I'm just yeah. trying to put myself back in that mindset. Of, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago for me. I'm like, you guys yeah. are so rude. There's, there's no reason for this. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. There's a gate. So, there's a gatekeeping thing. Community for sure. Yeah. Going yeah, on. Big which, time. Which is unfortunate man and that's one of the you know one of the things that we try to combat with this podcast yeah. you know? we use a lot of photography fancy words <laughs> but we also try to explain them so yeah. that uh, like new people can grasp that so yeah we've pretty much covered it man we talked about you know uh like the buying new versus buying used, some different brands and stuff like that i mean we we can still get into the uh maybe as a wrap up we can talk about like the uh the complete camera history and things like that um yeah we talked about like a lot of little tips and uh little things that you can do just to make sure that that purchase goes smoothly for you uh yeah the difference between like getting that like crop sensor thing that kit lens uh maybe one more thing is like the the mirrorless dslr debate we can maybe touch on that like as a first camera do you think that you really need to get into the mirrorless which is going to be like more expensive even one thing too like with these brand new cameras they're not really field tested and they're they're putting out software updates that are like completely Constantly. changing your camera yeah. right so 
you know, maybe as a new person, it's possible that that DSLR, the trusted DSLR might be better. What do you think? I never had a DSLR. Wow, you never had one. So yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. But. Well, I have. I've had DSLRs. Uh, and I will say that they, yeah, like they're, they're solid. The yeah, especially the uh, the Canon uh, DSLRs like your five Ds, your six Ds, you will be the Rebel, rebels. Yeah, like, yeah even the yeah, rebels are rebels, fine, yeah. and you can get a good deal on them, right? Yeah. Like you can get a really good deal. They've been around for so long that you know you can get a used one at a cheap price, and with the availability of lenses, right? Especially yes. used glass, yep. like. If you're still trying to figure out exactly what type of photography you want to do and you, exactly. want to, and you need it to be flexible and you want to be able to buy new lenses and try them out. Like if I want to buy a lens for this thing, I'm spending a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Like, and that's just, that's just what it is where if you do kind of stick with the DSLR, you're, you're going to be annoyed with some stuff. The video, I'll tell you right now, the video capabilities of DSLRs are not great. Right? So yeah. So if you don't, yeah. if you're not taking video, maybe consider DSLR. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like the durability and stuff like that, like I have actually started to test because now I'm getting a little bit more like uh, comfortable with uh, getting, you know, getting my mirrorless a little bit out there, get, getting a little bit of rain on it and stuff like that. Oh, man, but that yeah, me out, my yeah. DSLR was trusted though, man. I brought really? that thing. In yeah. the, I brought that thing in snowstorms. Yeah. I brought it in like full on rainstorms, got it like sand? soaking wet sand. I never really yeah, fucked okay. with, but yeah, yeah sand yeah. is bad for every camera. <laughs> I know, but it's such a nice yeah, place to shoot. Yeah. And there's just like, yeah, there's little things about mirrorless where it is, you do have to realize like it is a new technology and they are still working out some of the bugs. Like I get um, little uh, dust specks and shit like that that get in and get right on the sensor, right? Yeah. Like, and that never used to happen, right? Because of the mirror. the DSLR. Yeah. Well, the mirror and also just like the, just I guess the reliability of the mount as well, where like stuff just wasn't getting in, right? So yeah. The yeah, the DSLR thing like might be might be a good option for for some people. So uh, yeah, man. We'll, before we get out of here, we'll go through uh, we'll go through your your camera history. Every camera you've ever owned. Go. Okay, so I went with the Canon M10 to the M6, and then I was gifted a Minolta Hymatic 7S, which uh, which caused me to go full rangefinder. Um, then I went from that to the Fuji, Fuji X100F I still have here, to a Leica M8. Nice. And man. now I'm, I'm trapped. And what's your favorite? It's definitely the Leica M8. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I also have a, <laughs> a Canon RP. Oh, nice. But yeah. um, that's for my professional work, and the M8 is is fun. Sweet. It teaches me things every day. So. Yeah, I started uh, myself on you know this thing. I love <laughs> that thing. Canon power I'm take shots. Take that from you. You can have it. <laughs> yeah. uh, GoPro oh, I had for a little while too, just for some video work. Uh, then I got my T5i, which was decent. T5i, great, yeah. great, great, great camera. Yeah. Went up to the uh, 6D Mark II, which I used oh, okay. for three years, I guess. Liked that one a lot. Took nice photos, and obviously my uh, my new camera, the Sony A7 IV. Can't really say too many bad things about it. I do love this camera. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good journey. And I uh, hope that you guys have a good photography journey out there. Uh, before we get out of here, I just got to tell you guys a couple of things that you can do to help out the podcast. You can rate us on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube. We got like a video version of this one where we're holding up cameras and stuff. So if you want that visual aid, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can check that out. Uh, you can donate to our patreon and you can check out our sponsor cloudspot and you can get 50 percent off and that's uh pretty awesome and jay the last thing that we need to do here we go is a something random and for the something random i'm just gonna ask you what is your favorite local beer uh amsterdam blonde amsterdam blonde yeah. all right that's a good choice i'm gonna go with uh great lakes brewery canuck that's uh it's a there classic beer so go out there try out some cameras drink some beers don't be afraid to rent and don't be afraid to rent yeah <laughs> okay there you go Excellent.